Shalom. We are the Hebrew Israelites coming out here week in and week out to prophesy the downfall of America and to wake up our people, the elect of the nation of Israel. First and foremost, we want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Double honors to our elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, and salutations to all the Akim out there that push the word of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh in truth and sincerity, man. We out here another week, man, to, to prophesy, man, and to preach and to edify through the word and uh, the spirit of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh man. If that's not what you're doing, then you more you more than likely aren't part of the elect. Okay? So um, to kick things off, get Romans 8. Up. It's the book of Romans. Chapter 8, verse 1. Right. There is therefore now no condemnation. To them which are in Yahweh Shai. Right, man. There, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Yahweh Shai. The reason why Paul said that is because, really, the entire nation of Israel, we are under the curses of Deuteronomy 28, man. All right? Because we sinned against the Lord, man, and the wages of sin is death. Okay? Because one of, one of the curses that the Most High pronounced against us is that um, that he would uh, he would continue to persecute us and cause us to go through tribulations and trials until he had destroyed us, man. Okay, but when you when you come to the knowledge of Yahweh Shai, man, and you believe in Yahweh Shai, there is no more condemnation in you because you mortify the deeds of the flesh and you walk after the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. And to prove that, somebody get John chapter three, uh, verse fifteen. John 3 and 15? Yeah. Come closer, Rob. This is John 3 and 15. Mm -hmm. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Right, man. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life, man. Keep reading. For the Most High so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten Son, mm -hmm. that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Come on, keep, keep that precept on. So um, that world right there is talking about Israel, man, because the, the scriptures say as, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, which was the brazen serpent, going back to Numbers 22, so shall the Son of Man be lifted up on the cross, man. Okay, and when Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, it was to reconcile Israel to the Most High because they sinned against the Lord, they murmured against the Lord, and the Lord sent serpents against them that bit them, man, and they were dying of the, they were dying of the serpents, man. So Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, and whosoever listened to Moses, and, uh, and Moses commanded them to be bitten by the serpent, they were healed and reconciled to the Most High, man. And, that's, and that, and that uh, is the same way that Yahweh Shah was lifted up, so that whosoever believeth on Yahweh Shah would be redeemed and healed from the curses, man. Okay, and, re and, uh, and receive eternal life, man. And the only way to do that is by believing on Yahweh Shah that he's the Son of God. Go ahead. Verse 17. For the Most High sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, mm -hmm. but that the world through him might be saved. Right. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Mm -hmm. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Keep going. But he that believeth not is condemned already, mm -hmm. because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High. That's right, man. So if you believe on the only begotten name, uh, the only begotten Son of the Most High, His name is Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, man, who sits on the right hand of the Majesty. Then there is no condemnation unto you, man, because you believe on Him and you're going to establish your works by faith in Him, man. Go back to Romans 8. Uh. Book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 1. Mm -hmm. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahweh Shai, who walk not after the flesh. But after the spirit. Right, man. So if you truly really walk, uh, if you truly believe in Yahweh Shai, man, and you truly walking after the flesh, after the spirit, then you're not going to do the works of the flesh, man. Because there are a lot of people out there that say they believe in Jesus Christ, they believe in God, they believe in Yahweh Shai, but they still continue to sin, man. And the Lord said that not every man who says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, man. But he that doeth the will of my Father uh, shall, enter into the uh, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, man. Okay? So just because you know the name of Yahweh Shai, man, or you claim to believe in Jesus, that don't mean that you're going to make it, man. You have to repent, man, okay? You have to leave off the works of darkness, man. You have to mortify the, the, the works of the flesh, okay? So in order to truly walk in the spirit, man, 
then you have then not only do you have to believe in Yahweh Shai, but you have to follow the spirit, man, which is the word, man. Okay? You have to follow the words of Yahweh Shai, man. You have to repent, keep the law, statutes, and commandments, man. And that's another thing that goes on in Israel, man. People teaching that the that the law, statutes, and commandments are done away with, man. And teaching the, that teaching people that they don't have to keep the laws, man. And that is totally against the scriptures. And that's blasphemy against the scriptures and blasphemy against who the one you call Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that he come in the volume of the book. Or if you say the law is done away with, that means you're saying who you call ignorant he called Jesus Christ is done away with. Right, man. And the Lord said, um, the Lord said, uh, um, whoever, whoever uh, breaks the least of these commandments and teach other men so uh, shall be considered least in the kingdom of heaven, man. All right? And, and then to say the law is done away with, First of all, Paul said in, uh, if I'm correct, if it's Romans chapter 7, Paul said that I had not known sin but by the law, man. I think it's Romans chapter 6 or, or Romans chapter 7, man. So if the law is done away with, then how can you call yourself a sinner? And if you can't call yourself a sinner, then how can you say that you need a savior? And if you don't need a savior, then guess what? When Yahweh Shai came and died, he did not die for you. Because obviously, you know, you're, you're, you're perfect and you're good. And guess what? Guess what? When he come back, since you since you already established your own righteousness, when he come back, he gonna destroy you, man. Okay, and then that would, that would mean that there's no there's no point of the new covenant, man. So motherfuckers gonna be in the kingdom eating pork and committing adultery and worshiping Baal and Horus and shit. God forbid, man. Just go back to that Romans eight. Huh? Romans eight verse two, for the law of the spirit of life. And Yahweh Shai have made me free from the law of sin and death. Right, man. So on one level, Paul's saying that uh, by believing in Yahweh Shai, you repent and you're not following after the works of the flesh, which would lead you to sin and death. And then on another level, Paul's saying that he's not justified by the law of Moses, man. Because you can't be justified by the law of Moses because all have sinned and false, fallen short of the glory of the Most High, man. And the scriptures say in, in Deuteronomy, Curses everyone that con continueth not in all things which are written in the law to do them, man. So, if, so if, if you uh, break the laws and you consider yourself justified by the laws, then really your justification is in vain, man. Because you, once you break one law, you under the curse, and you and you are liable to get put to death, man. If you break one, you break all. Go ahead. Verse 3, for what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. Right, man. So it's not the law that was bad, but, but that it was weak through the flesh, man. The flesh is what causes you to sin, man. Because the law, the law is good and it's spiritual, man. But, you know, our bodies, our flesh is carnal, man. Our carnal desires make us want to uh, sin against the most high's laws, man. So what the law could not do, that it was made weak through the flesh. Go ahead. The Most High sending His Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemns sin in the flesh. Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Right, man. So Yahweh I came to die and condemned sin in the flesh, so that we, we who believe in Him and walk after Him, would attain the righteousness that's in the law, man. So not only by, not, we don't only do that by repenting and keeping the law, but ultimately, ultimately in the kingdom, the most high is going to have, have it to where the law is written in our inward parts, man. So we ain't never going to go off no more. And we're going to be, we're, we're actually going to be righteous, man. we actually never going to sin no more. And we're not going to be under the curses, man. We're going to do everything that's written in the law, man. Which is, which is one of the reasons why Yahweh Shai said, I am, I am come not to destroy the law and the prophets, but I am come to fulfill, man, which means to execute. Go ahead. Verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Right, man, that's right. To be carnally minded is death, man. So if you follow, at, so if you follow after your flesh, then you're going to die, man, because the flesh will call you, cause you to sin, and sin bringeth forth death, man. Plain and simple, man. You got a precept on. This is 
1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse, verse 15. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. But who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Yahweh Shah. Right, man. So, so if you have the mind of Yahweh Shah, that's what makes you spiritual, man. And if and if you are spiritual, then you are judged of no man. Okay? So if you believe in, in, the, in the scriptures, you understand the scriptures, you have the mind of Yahweh Shah because Yahweh Shah dwells in you, then there is no condemnation to you, man. That's it. Book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 6. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against the Most High, for it is not subject to the law of the Most High, neither indeed can be. Verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please the Most High. Right, man. So if you if you following your carnal mind, man, and you're in, and you're in, uh, you're you're taking heed to your uh, to your fleshly desires, man. You cannot please the Most High, man. You cannot please the Most High because the Most High is not pleased with sin. Go ahead. Verse nine. But ye ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of the Most High dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Hamashiach, he is none of his. Right, man. So. If you don't believe in Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, then the Spirit of the Most High is not dwelling with you, man. You don't belong to the Most High, man. It doesn't, it doesn't I mean, it don't, it don't really, really, to be honest, man, it don't really matter if if uh, you were born an Israelite, you know you were Israelite, man. If you're not part of the elect, man, and the Spirit of the, Spirit of the Most High not dwelling in, in you, man, then really, man, you, you're going to be allotted with the rest of these heathens, man. That's right. You were born in vain, man. That's right. Okay, you can't even you can you can call yourself a son of, the, of God, a son, a son of the Most High after the flesh, but after the Spirit, you can't, man. Mm -hmm. All right. Verse ten, and if Hamashiach be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Verse eleven, but if the Spirit of Him that raised up Yahweh shot from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Hamashiach from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. Right, man. So, so if the spirit, the spirit of him who raised up Yahweh Shai from the dead dwell in you, and the only way he can dwell in you is if you believe in Yahweh Shai, then the same way he raised up Yahweh Shai from the dead is the same way that he's going to quicken our mortal bodies, man, which, which means that we're going to have incorruptible bodies, man. We're going to have celestial bodies, man. We're never going to die anymore. We're going to have eternal life, okay? We're never going to go off anymore, man. By his spirit that dwelleth in you. Verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of the Most High, they are the sons of the Most High. Right, so as many as are as as are led by the Spirit of the Most High, they are the sons of the Most High, man. Who is that talking about? That's talking about the elect of the nation of Israel, man. Because the only people who can even receive the Spirit of the Most High and be considered the sons of the Most High through faith are the elect, man. That's the reason why Yahweh Shai came to die, so that through faith in him, the elect could be called sons of God, man. The elect of Israel, man. But two thirds, they not gonna believe in Yahweh Shai, man. So can they truly be called sons of, sons of God after the Spirit? No, man. Keep going. Verse fifteen: For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Right, man. And what's the spirit of bondage, man? The spirit of bondage is what leads you to what what causes you to sin, which is the flesh, man. When in this flesh, this flesh is like our. This place is, this, the, the desires of the flesh is like chains, man, okay? 
all right? And 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 really, the spirit of bondage is, is sin, man. Because Yahweh Shai said, and if I'm correct, in John chapter eight, Yahweh Shai said unto the Jews which believe, He said, uh, to whomever, um, to whomever, whomever you serve, you are, whom, if you sin, you are a servant to sin, basically. All right. So if you're a sinner, then you're a slave to sin, and ba which basically means that you're in bondage, man. All right. So if you believe in, in Yahweh Shai, then you're not. You're not uh, subject unto the spirit of bondage, man. You're not a servant unto sin anymore. Read that verse. See, a, a nigga uh, take that and say, okay, see, we're not under the law. We don't have to keep the law. Because that's bondage for us to have to keep the law. No, it's saying you keep the deeds of Yahweh Shah, who is contained in the volume of the book, man. Right. And if you believe in him, you're going to keep the laws to the best of your ability, right? Man. Out of obedience, man. Right. And re really... First of all, the law came from the Most High, man. All right. So if you don't keep, if you ain't keeping, if you if you claim to uh, believe in the Lord, man, you claim to believe in, in, in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, who who the world ignorantly calls God and Jesus Christ, and you ain't keeping the laws, man. Basically, you what you're really saying is that you don't believe that the Most High is righteous who commanded it to begin with, man. As if the Most High didn't have the best uh, the best in mind for you when He gave you those laws, man. You'll follow the white man's laws, you'll, 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 you'll follow Easter, Christmas, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, all these pagan holidays, all right? But you won't follow the laws of the Most High, which got you in the position where you're in anyway right now, man. Right. Got some? Got some? Let's go back to the body. Uh, Philippians 3 and 20. For our conversation is... Louder, louder. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, Yahweh Shai, Mashiach, who shall change our vile bodies, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he be able even to subdue all things unto himself. Right, man, that's right. So, uh, so we look, so our conversation is heaven, man. The reason why we, the reason, the reason why we do what we do, man, the reason why we preach and prophesy the reason why we keep the law, statutes, and commandments, man, is because we know that we have an expectation in heaven, man. Because we know that when Yahweh shall, uh, shall appear, shall appear in his glorious appearance, man, that he's gonna change our bodies, he's gonna change our viral bodies to be fashioned like his glorious body, man. Okay, so we gotta do what it we gotta do what it takes to be accounted worthy of that, man. Alright? And he's gonna do that by the by the same power. The same power that allows him to subdue all things under him, man, which is which is Yahweh, man. Yahweh is the one who gave gave any, everything uh, to the jurisdiction of Yahweh Shai, man. And at the end of the day, Yahweh Shai is going to give the glory and praises to Yahweh, regardless, man. That's it. You got some? You got some? This is First Corinthians 15 and 51. Behold, I show you a mystery: we shall not all sleep, but we shall be but we shall all be changed. Right, man. Paul said, "I show you a mystery, man, which is, which is uh, which would be the, which would be to say something that is is not uh, readily understood, something that a lot of people don't know a secret, man. All right, we shall not all sleep, which is to die. Not all not all of the elect men, the one third, are gonna die, but we shall all be changed, man. Read that part again. Behold, I show I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep." But we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. When the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall rise, shall be raised in, incorruptible. Right, man. At, at the last trump, man. So when Yahweh shall come with his angels, man, and he give that great shout, man, we're gonna be changed. We're gonna uh, our bodies are gonna be changed into glorious bodies, man. Righteous, holy, perfect bodies, man. Immaculate bodies, man. Okay, and the twinkling of an eye, man. So one moment, one moment, an elect brother going to be in the flesh, probably getting his head cut off or whatever may be happening to him, trembling, sweating, blood, who knows, man. And in the next moment, he's going to be in a chariot with a new body, man, and the twinkling of an eye, man. Go ahead. And we, and we shall be changed. Mm -hmm. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. Right, man. This corruptible must put on incorruption, incorruption, man. So this corruptible body has to be shed and put on in, an incorruptible body, man. Go ahead. And this mortal must put on immortality. Right, this mortal 
must put on immortality, man, and that's righteous, man, so that we can so that we can forever be with the Lord, man, and serve Him in truth and in righteousness and without fear, man. Go ahead. So when this corruptible shall be put on incorruption, and this mortal shall be put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? God, man, so that's, that, that again is righteous, man, because in, in the incorruptible bodies, we're not going to sin anymore, and since we're not going to sin anymore, we're never going to be able to die, man. We're going to actually live forever in the presence of Yahweh Mashi Yahweh Shai, man, the elect, man, and the, and the, the one-third and the two-thirds that come back in the kingdom, man, because all, all the promises that's going to be uh, fulfilled uh, to the elect, man, their, see, their children after them are going to inherit that, man. Okay? Go ahead. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Right, man. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is law. Is the law, man. So the reason why the reason why we the reason why we're under the condemnation or we're under the condemnation of death is because of sin, man. And sin is revealed by the law. But but what would happen if the Most High gave us new bodies to where we can't sin and transgress the laws, man? That means that death would be no more for the elect, man. That's right. Go ahead. But thanks be to Yahweh, which given us victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. That's right, man. Thanks to the Most High that has given us victory through uh, our Lord, Yahweh Shah, man. Is it? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abiding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in is not in vain in the Lord. God, man. So, so, wherefore, my brethren, be unmovable and always abounding in good works unto the Lord, man. Because we know that that the works that we do are not without reward, man. 